I also lost my chapstick. Like, because now when it's hot like this, you can't leave it in your car. It turns into like a. I may have been live already. My watch is now jingling. Oh look, I succeeded. Every day my watch tells me whether or not I'm fat. Yeah. So, anyways, uh, welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to On Set. Uh, I'm Daniel Norton. This is Dave. Uh, Casey's helping us out today <laughs> with the modeling, and we got Seth on the mighty mixer. Um, yeah, well, I'm working on my intros. I got, you know. So, welcome on this hot day in New York. Uh, or it's more humid than it is hot, right? I mean, you got a jacket on. So do you? Or is that just for the style? Because you're wearing short pants. Short. I'm not sure. Rain? All right, got it. Blame it on the rain. Yeah. Anyways, so <laughs> here we are, and we're going to do some character portraits. Um, I'm a little, uh, yeah, I don't know what you call it, but a little tired. So uh, I was on my way here and on the train, and I'm sorry, I don't know his name. I feel like a jerk. Uh, uh, a gentleman gave me some Charleston Chew. I guess we were talking about that. What? Is he hiding? Oh, the camera's over there. I thought you meant the guy was here. Yeah, he's, he's he, oh. He's gonna come. I love Charleston Chew. The, the way you gotta eat these though, you gotta freeze them. So we're gonna throw them in the freezer uh, and we'll eat them later on while we play Dungeons and Dragons. All right, so <laughs> here we go. Uh, welcome to On Set. Uh, we're gonna do character portraits today. So, you know, <coughs> character portraits could be just about anything, really, because it's just something where you're trying to bring out the character of somebody versus just like the generic beauty of them, right? If I'm making just a standard portrait of you, I'm just trying to make you look good. Maybe it's for your passport or for your LinkedIn profile or Tinder, I don't know, right? But a character portrait maybe has something a little bit more going on. Now, I like to look at it the way that, uh, that Avedon, right, I'm, gonna, I'm calling it out, I'm calling out the name, uh, looked at it. Avedon didn't really care about you, uh, I've heard him say in interviews, he cared about what he interpreted when he saw you. So I might see you and think, you're this, like that's what I picture, and you light somebody to emphasize that, right? You might not be that at all, and maybe you're not, right? Um, maybe you are, who knows if you're that. But, so anyways, we know Casey's not that, but we're gonna light her up and, uh, and kind of make it a little funkier. So this is gonna give us some, some room to play. We're gonna play around a little bit with shadows, we're gonna play around with mood. Um, and obviously, these things can be accentuated or should be accentuated uh, in a project. So if you are going to shoot somebody in a moody, dark way, then possibly having moody, dark makeup or moody, dark clothing or a location or whatever is going to tie into it, right? Uh, we're going to go through a bunch of different things, so we're going to kind of stay somewhat uh, basic, but think about that. What I, what I will say is this. If you set up your standard lighting like you always do and you put a pair of funny glasses on somebody and a nose and like, the, like uh, those ones with the eyebrows, do they have those still? You know, uh, no, the nose and the eyebrows. That's not a character. I mean, maybe it is. I don't know. Uh, you know, that's not what I mean by this. We're going to do some lighting that has some character to it. We're going to play around with color. Um, we're going to use some new tools. Um, I will try to say everything I'm using as I go. Um, and if I don't, please ask, and I will uh, define what it is. Hopefully, hopefully I know what it is. Um, uh, so we're shooting. We're going to use my Hasselblad today, uh, the X1D with a 90 millimeter lens. Uh, we're going to use some Profoto lighting, which we'll get to. Um, this is just basically, this could be any camera you have a camera you know it's important uh, but this is a lighting class so don't don't worry too much about that uh, this is an 90 millimeter lens which is a pretty standard portrait lens we're not going to get into like doing crazy wide angle stuff that can also be part of it this is very specifically character portrait lighting so we're keeping the lens and the camera fixed for this one uh, maybe in the future we'll do one on lensing and stuff for making some crazy character stuff that's also really fun and in fact the first time that i ever worked with casey we did it for erix or did we learn that we say that wrong? Irix, or is there, I don't know, whichever one's right. They make some wide angle lenses, which are really cool. Um, and uh, yeah, we had, we blew up their uh, Photo Plus booth. When was that, two years ago? Photo Plus was last year. Last year, yeah, it was a little, it was a little nuts. Um, but anyways, prior to that, I photographed uh, Casey. Um, and you can see that, I think. Did you use it? Maybe, is it on your Instagram? Yes. Use it meaning you put it out for public consumption. You can see it on her Instagram, Casey McSherry. Yeah. What do you mean by use it, right? Okay, so anyways, we got all that out of the way. So let's do something. So I do have something really kind of cool today, I think. Um, Shamir made me get up early and dropped off this, uh, this lantern. Now, if you don't know what a lantern is, basically, uh, 
A lantern is generally used in filmmaking when you're trying to get an even light over a, a large area. Let's say if you have two people talking to each other and they're facing each other, you can float this thing in the, be between them and it casts kind of like a light in all directions. Um, I actually have a whole video about lanterns if you check out Adorama TV on the YouTube. Not right now. Um, one of the on sets is all about lanterns. I talk about using the, the inexpensive $10 Chinese ones versus the, uh, I don't know if they're made in China, but they're called Chinese lanterns because they're that style. Um, and versus like a proper Shamir lantern or whatever and what the benefits of them, blah, blah. We're not gonna talk about that today. They have a new one which has LEDs. We're breaking all kinds of things today. I'm gonna use LEDs, I know, I never do. Um, this is uh, Light Gear, so I have to check the name. Uh, it's in, in combination with Shamir. So Shamir makes uh, these frame systems. I'm not gonna get too far into this because it's really about this. Um, and I've got this flat panel of LEDs and we're gonna use this with the lantern so it makes a very lightweight lantern to use. But since I have the LEDs here, and LEDs in this pattern are gonna probably not be that super crazy flattering with the flatness shooting it right at her, we're gonna start there because why not start unflattering? That's what we like to do. Um, yeah, we're gonna do that. And then we'll add some flash in too, why not? So I'm gonna start here. There we go. All right, good. So typically when I'm photographing uh, a female subject, right? Uh, I like to put, position my light more or less symmetrically. Like usually in the front, in the middle, it casts you know shadows behind them. Make, it makes the face a little more narrow, brings out the jaw bones, et cetera, et cetera. And we're not doing that, right? We're going to go straight up from the side. This is going to throw light on one side of her face and shadow on the other, right? And we're going to use that shadow. We're going to play with it uh, with mood. I think that's what we're going to do, right? So let's start here. And uh, yeah, come forward, please. I think you probably got to be a little bit. Is that good? Yeah. All right. Uh, let's see. We're going to fire this bad boy up. I should know how to use it. Now, I learned last week, I think it was last week, to not to plug it in uh, in this spot. So we have to add a little extension to it. There was an extension in there, did you? There. Oh, perfect. So, oh, that's magnetic, by the way, which is pretty cool because I've almost dropped it four times today. <laughs> that makes five. If anybody's ever seen me do any of these things, I drop stuff all the time. Uh, okay, so this is a dual color LED, meaning that it can be a daylight or tungsten, white balance, or somewhere in between. Um, it looks a little bit like, oh, that could be a background too. Oh, groovy. Groovy. Maybe we will. Maybe we will use that. All right. You can actually borrow it. Yeah. Um, nobody else. That's actually really cool what Dave is doing. Let's just all stare at it for a minute. Okay, done. All right, so we're going to go daylight? Yeah, sure. We, I can tell this is daylight because it's more cool in color versus the tungsten, which is more warm in color to my eyes. So we're lighting her uh, from one side and actually a little bit low. Let's just leave it like there. Is it killing you guys in the audience? Should I turn it the other way? Yeah, you guys are blinded, right? All right, let's put it on the other side of her. Yeah, we'll plug it in somewhere else. Sorry, Casey. Casey's name is a lot like a drink, right? Yes. Yeah, the K I drink the Casey McSherry when I go out. I would drink that. All right. As long as it has whiskey and Coke. If that's what it is, then I would drink it. All right. Light panel-y thing. Light gear panel. I don't know exactly what it's called, even though I just told you I would tell you what everything was called. It's a light gear panel. It looks like it's about two feet square. Um, we're going to throw some light now. Let's, if you remember, it's so interesting. I've done all these things to build up to this point. See, I did this. I was smart, right? I planned it. Um, if you remember back a few weeks ago when we did constant light versus flash, some of the downsides to our constant light is going to be we're not going to be able to control all the light in our space, right? We're going to have all this light's going to affect us. She's not going to be able to be completely frozen because there's just not a whole lot of light comparably coming out of this thing. So we'll see where we're at, and then we'll play around a little bit. So that actually doesn't look that bad. Who knew? Yeah, well, we'll take a picture. What do you got? Dave's using the light meter, the uh, Sekonic 308 SUWQ5. Like a 60th of a second oh, at, at uh, F4. 60th at F4, 400 ISO? 100 ISO. 100. Oh, that's pretty good, actually. I'm sorry? 60th of a second, F4, 100 ISO. That's not terrible. Now, I'm, I'm guessing that some of the light in the space is affecting our shot as well. Um, if by buying it means no, yes. <laughs> Not yet. Okay. 
Uh, I have not purchased the Hasselblad yet. I am borrowing it. However, I am going to buy one because I moved the light closer. Why? I felt like it. Did you already take the picture? No. I may have screwed up the Hasselblad earlier, by the way, because I was trying to use the nose control. Oh, perfect. Thanks for coming, guys. Uh, kind of cool in blue. Yeah. It's cool in blue. <laughs> So our white balance is set to to, uh, to tungsten, so she was looking a little bit on the blue side, right? So now we've got a little bit of strength, right? We have a little bit of strength because we have the shadow coming. She, you know, it's also showing off her jawline. Um, you know, Casey's like a superhero, uh, always. Um, all right, let's, let's, make, let's make it a little bit funkier, though. I kind of want to see a little bit of light in her other eye, though, right? Like, this is nice, and it's got some mood going on. Actually, let's turn away from the light first. What I want to do in the beginning, and I often do this when I have a new subject, is I want to see what they look like in different like, swaths of light, right? Like, let's say I've already made my decision. I want to do a side-lit portrait, right? Well, I want to see like, how this is going to look on, on Casey's face. So I'm going to do a couple of shots to, to look. Um, obviously, with the, with the constant light, you can see it a little better. Uh, you don't necessarily. Can we actually kill these? Because I think they're getting on the background, possibly. Although, I don't think that's, I don't think all the light is on the background. It's very moody in here now. All right, we're going to kill that and see what happened. I'm sure it killed some of the light on her as well. Questions so far? Yes. Ah, yes. What? What kind of look are you going for? Okay, this is it. Right, exactly. What am I looking for? This. Right? We're going for something that's a little bit more mysterious, right? Now, just getting light on one side of her face really didn't do that for me, right? She looked a little bit more superhero-ish, right? But now I'm starting to get closer to what I like. I actually like that she's eyeballing Dave uh, out of the corner of her eye, which I normally wouldn't like. But we're getting that little tiny catch light there. If she would turn her face a little bit more towards the camera, um, we'd get a little bit more maybe on there. I like, we're going for a little bit of mystery. I will say this, though. The light is tremendously soft, and we may want to mess around with that a little bit. Do we have that cookie still? Uh, yeah. I just ask for random stuff. That, that's what I do, by the way. Actually, you know what would be better? A gel sheet. We have, gel. have we got a big gel sheet? Yeah, we have a gel sheet. Yeah. All right, we're going to put a gel on it. Why? Because right now I'm looking at this, and I see the back of her hair is so luxurious. It's like a, like a hair ad. I don't want a hair ad. I want mystery, right? I'm not going to have a, a mysterious hair ad. Uh, I mean, a mysterious, yeah, you can't have a mysterious hair ad, right? Maybe you can. I don't know. Maybe, maybe a perfume ad could be mysterious. <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm saying. I don't want to have uh, it too beautiful. I don't want people to look at her hair. I want them to look at that little corner of the eye that I'm talking about. OK, so 100 ISO. Uh, so the question is, why is it so dark? Now, she's properly exposed. So maybe you're asking, why is the rest of the room dark? Well, because it's dark in here. I mean, uh, this light is not falling anywhere, really, except, I mean, look at how close the light is to her. Right? We're looking at. What, 18 inches? Yeah. Sure. The light is about 18 inches from her. The light is about four feet from the background, right? Doing my little math in my head, 18 inches is much closer, right? The closer the light is to something, <laughs> the brighter it's going to be. Light's not re light is hitting the background. I can clearly see it with my eye. But proportionately, it's much less light. That's why it's dark back there. OK, did we get the gel? <laughs> yeah, let's go green. Oh, okay. I mean, blue would be the obvious choice, but I think green's good. Yeah, let's go ugly green. Turn away from the light, Carolyn. Yes, yeah, yeah, stop talking to Casey and she won't be blinded. All right. So one advantage of having such a large like panel light like this and the fact that here's the thing. Let's just do it first. I'm not even going to tell you. We're just going to do it. That's how I roll today. Have we got a C47? I can't believe I caught that. Me either. I am not <laughs> athletic. You could have made it. You could have made something. We don't need sports. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Go sports team. All right, so. All right, so go ahead and stand in. I think they stand when they clap, right? Okay, so what we want to do is position her so that it's all the gels on her hair and not on her face. That looks wow. Nope, back. back a Dave can probably see better than me, so don't ask me. It's always important. And I, I mean, I'm saying that, by the way, this is what art directors do. If you've ever been on a job, an art director will stand over here and be like, 
to have the model turn. No, you need to look from the camera position before you start directing the model. That's why Dave's there. I, I put it off to him. Don't feel like, hey, uh, you have to always tell the model what to do. All right. Oh, interesting. That's exactly what I wanted. I'm sure I like green, though. We're a bit dark, right? Yeah. We've lost a little bit of light, right? Because her hair, some of the light was filtering through her hair, making something really interesting. Um, what I would like to do is take that, uh, uh, that swath of hair that's over your left shoulder and get rid of it, because that's normal color while the rest of your hair is green. Uh, the other, the other side. Yeah. Yeah, your military left. OK. We opened up the camera by 2 thirds, yes. Sorry. Uh, you are sorry. That's right, the background was underexposed, yep. Is it, is it mainly sort of like cheeks the side of the face that's well All right, so let's talk about exposure because this, we're getting questions here. When I'm making a portrait, right? Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. All right. Thanks for coming, guys. We'll see you next time. No, that's, that's pretty good. You know what, though? I got to say, I was thinking the green would be good, but let's mix it. Let's do green, and then let's clamp another color to here for the bottom part. Let's do, like, green. What? Yeah. Yeah, so let's talk about exposure for one second, but while I'm doing that, can we throw a, let's throw a, a not, no, not, not red, because that'd be complimentary. Throw like blue here. So I'm just on the bottom half of it. Okay, so what's important for exposure, right? Because we're doing these character portraits, right? Which means we're gonna deal a lot with kind of unconventional exposure, right? We're talking about images that aren't gonna be evenly lit across the whole body, across the whole face. So what's important to expose, right? That's the question. Is it the eyes? Not necessarily. In fact, I think that we're going to play around a lot with not getting light in the eyes or very minimal light in the eyes because the eyes are really the, one of the biggest storytelling devices you have when you're making a portrait, assuming you're showing somebody's whole head. So essentially, if we're going to have uh, skin in the shot, right, I want to look at somewhere in the shot there needs to be pro properly exposed skin tone. Right? So in that case, her cheek made the most sense. Right? If I were to ex expose, uh, open up wider, that would have been completely blown out, which blown out might have had an airy look. That would be a different feel. I'm going for dark and moody, so I don't want blown out. I want neutral on the skin, dark in the background. So I'm looking for where the, light, the main light source is hitting her skin, and I'm exposing that properly. Right? The rest of it, her hair, doesn't matter. The, 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 the side of her face that's away from the camera doesn't matter. What I want is that swath of skin, on, which is basically her cheek in this case, uh, properly exposed. OK. So what we're doing here is we're creating a bit of a rainbow. Not really a rainbow at all, but color. Yeah, there we go. All right, so oh, this is pretty cool. You're, you're turning into a little bit of like a, like a, like a I don't want to say a witch, because that sounds negative, but like a kind of a cool this is witch. This is oh, like an elf. This That's a positive thing. Elven magic. Yes. All right, this is really cool. So now. I even love that she's getting a little bit of color on her nose. Again, I wouldn't normally like that, but for this situation, she's like in, in the, 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 the color, in the, the rainbow, as I'm saying, it's not really a rainbow, uh, creating uh, this, I kind of want a little bit of yellow at the top. Can we get a little bit of yellow? Do we? Like across the top? Just a little bit, yeah, I think so. So, does that make sense? Orange, yellow, green, blue. Yeah, green, blue. Okay, I'm doing my rainbow correctly. I, I, this light is called the uh, light gear panel thingy. It's a, light, it's, a, it's a system that you get with Shamira. It's, a, it's their Shamira slash light gear lantern is what it's called. Um, I don't know exactly what it's called. Sorry, Shamira. Um, um, this light will change your life. It's actually pretty cool. They dropped it off today, and I'm not usually a big LED person. Um, but they're pretty good. I mean, it's been, been pretty nice. Does that have somebody's name on it? Does it say Last X Witness? Okay. Yep. All right, so. All right, so what we're doing here is we're creating a moody shot of Casey. Now, is Casey really an elf? Probably not. I mean, I'm not sure. But if we see her that way, that's what we're creating, right? We're creating this mood and this vibe, and that's what we want here. It's got, she's, a bit of a, she's a bit of a dark elf. Right? It's kind of moody. We might want to throw a little bit of something on the background to braid it up, but right now she's got this like natural kind of uh, uh, vibe going on. I will say this, there is some weird color stuff happening like on her cheek. We are getting some light on there that's a little bit off. Um, it's not terrible. My eyes 
and I'm okay with it. So again, it comes down to like this is neutral in, in color, but you can see here we're getting some color on her cheek. That's okay with me. I don't care. I'm okay with that because again, I'm creating a mood. I'm creating a character. I'm creating a vibe here. Uh, yeah, this, this is working out pretty good so far. I'm glad I came today. Question. That's correct. Aha, uh -huh. good. I was waiting for you. You get a free piece of candy, pick that up at the front. Exactly. If you noticed, see, I started to say this, and I said I wasn't going to tell you guys because I wanted to see if somebody picked up on it. If you did this with a softbox, it would not work like this. Because in a softbox, your light is in the back. It's coming forward. It's lighting up this whole uh, sheet. I mean, it would work on some level. But it's kind of like blending. Because the, yeah, these LEDs are just a bunch of small light sources, I'm literally gelling right on the light. That's how we're getting this nice divide of color. If you want to do this with a softbox, you'd probably want to use two lights and just push them next to each other, one with a gel and one without. Uh, but here we only have one light, uh, and it's working, and it's actually looking pretty fantastic. Do you think you would use this? What do you mean by use? <laughs> oh, you're going to use a reflector? All right, let's use a reflector. Why not? Uh, Too bad we don't have a, a rainbow reflector. Oh, I'll, uh, I'll get on that. Can we get on a rainbow, please? <laughs> actually, Taste wait, wait, the wait, rainbow. Wait, 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 wait. There we go. You can do neon paper. Let's see, neon paper. Thank you, Seth. I'll take pink. Of course you will. I like pink. I also like purple. But I think this pink will be more bright. Sorry, sorry for bending it a little bit. Is that going to do anything? Oh. Yeah, it does a lot. Wow. Nice. All right, here we go. You're welcome. By the way, <laughs> I, by the way, I'm about to steal this from Seth. Oh, come on. <laughs> Let, let's give credit where credit is due. Seth taught me this. I never knew that a colored paper would bounce back. I hate you so much. I'm going to try white real quick. Well, let's do white first. It is actually a really good device of showing how reflectors work. You look here ready to take off. Like rainbow bright. You're too far back. I could be wrong, though. I'm not saying at the camera, so I shouldn't say. I just said that. Oh, okay. See, I'm holding the reflector. Hmm. Okay. Ooh, shallow. Yeah. Yeah, it needs to be pushed in a lot closer. Just let me know uh, when I'm in. It's very nice, right? Good, good trick, Seth. And you know what's awesome? It actually looks awesome right here with this light behind. You should definitely use this for your project. Yep. I feel it's very slow. All right, let's see. Yeah, there you go. Nice. Nice. Now we got a little pink. I think I'd rather use a flash. Why? Because I have it. And as we all know, thank you, Seth. The more light you use the more you get paid. So, we'll use a flash in the back. Okay. Should we just lay the background with it? I don't know. Actually, let's give her like a hardcore separation light. And maybe we'll actually do it from, yeah, let's go really, yeah, let's do it that way. Put your face where, you, where you're gonna have it, please. Well, I gotta see so I can aim the light. All right. Let's see, we got the, uh, this is a uh, Profoto D2. Uh, it has a modeling light so we can aim it, which I shall do. So go ahead and turn your face slightly. Just, Dave, let me know when we get like a rim. That's probably way too much, right? All right, so let me aim the light. That's right on her, turning, 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 turning. Oh, interesting. Using the modeling light. Oh, OK. OK, that's the modeling light. OK, that's what I want, except flash. Perfect. OK, so since this is flash, uh, all right, so we can go like this. This is in 3A. I'll turn the modeling light off, because we get a long exposure. We don't want to deal with that. What are we at, F4? I'm going to dial this bad boy way down. How far down? Way down. 
Yeah, I'm going to meter it, but Zirconic pays me five cents every time I use this light meter. All right, so we're going to light meter this now. We're mixing our ambient and our flash, right? Our flash exposure, we're going to use our, we're going to leave everything set the same, 60th. Uh, we're going to change to, uh, let's see, mode. We're going to change to non-corded flash mode. You're at 90th, so I'll go to, ISO. oh, okay, change stuff. So uh, 200 ISO, 190th of a second. I'm gonna leave it at 60th, because there's no 90 on this that I can see. All right, so let's do a little poppity pop. Oh, 3X, that would be locked. I just attacked you with the string. I don't know if you can feel it or not. Uh, 2.03. So we need a couple stops there. So now what we're doing is we're creating this separation, right? Because we already have our vibe. Uh, 4.02, that should be fine. You see, what, see what we get. If it gets a little too bright, we can. Okay. okay, so why am I using the flash versus the modeling light? The flash is daylight balance. Also, the flash gives me a lot more control, right? I can now tweak this back and forth. The model only goes up and down to a certain extent. Whoa, that's a lot. Okay, so we'll turn it down a little bit, right? Easy as that. We don't want to match the exposure. We'll go down like at least a stop. Although I kind of like that it's kind of, if we had smoke. If it had, I got smoke. If it had <sighs> I'm thinking smoke, and then we basically bring this up like the moon. Now that we got this whole elf thing going on, All right, we're gonna steal Seth's other thing. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> this is the character light. Yeah, yeah. This is this is actually is this the one that Gavin Hoey gave you? It says for <laughs> Seth. For Seth from Gavin. Hoey. Gavin leaves Seth presence. Can you take this one? Not yet. I just, I just got up and gave it. Well, I'm, I, we need to set up the light first. I changed the position of it. Aren't you gonna do it? It's your deal. You're not gonna do it. We're gonna do this live. Yeah, why not? <laughs> All right, good. Now we're gonna add some smoke. Why? Because we have it. You just shake it, right? Shake it like a Polaroid picture? Yeah, but if, if you want to linger, go down low and let it go up. All right, here we go. I probably should wait till Dave's ready. Maybe. <laughs> All right, we'll try it again. All right, uh, don't breathe this in. Oh, it doesn't want to shoot up like that, though. There we go. All right, good. Shoot it into frame. Oh, shoot it into frame. You said up. I didn't know you were going to go long. Okay. Gotcha. Next time I'll do it. Next time. I don't know what's going on here. And pitch the whole thing. Now I'm dying over here. This is why, this is why Seth should have done it. We see that? <laughs> I am not a, uh, although we do get a little fuzz going on. Now I think there's too much. But we get here that we got a lot of shape going on, right? <laughs> so we've got... No, we'll get it in a second. I want to wait till it anticipates a little bit. So I'm like dying over here. We've got basically two lights going on, right? It's kind of in semi-unconventional positions. We've got, we've got one to her side, right, casting light. She's turning away from it, right, away from our main light source. The other one is like kind of a hair light. We're cheating a little bit, or not really, using the resources we have, turning that one light into a multicolored... Uh, uh, light, right? Because we can, right? I'm looking at the tool that I have, and I'm like, what can I do with this, right? How can I make this more interesting, more in the the style that I want for this person, this character that, that sat in front of me? Um, like, we, we uh, one of the reasons that I do this, particularly this event this way, is I don't come in with, like, an idea. Like, I don't have, like, a bag, like, like a, who's that guy that squishes the, the watermelons? Gallagher. Gallagher. I'm not like Gallagher, right? So I, I basically, I look at the person in front of me, I try to mess around with what tools I have to create something interesting. I think that's, that's part of the experimentation that it is photography and this portrait. Uh, you'll learn things. Now I know I can do this, right? I mean, I kind of knew I could do it. As soon as I saw the light, I was like, oh, good idea. But if she was paying me or I only had 10 minutes to shoot this, I probably wouldn't have done this right now, right? I would have done something more safe. Now it's in my bag of tricks. I can do this all the time. I'm going to keep these gels. Well, not these gels because they're Adoramas. Um, all right, so we're going to try it again. Can you spray it, please, Seth? Because you're much better at it than I am. Uh-oh, hold on. Oh, people are asking for links. Sorry, I'm taking Seth for a second. Uh, so, any questions here, locally? Yes, sir. Is that hairspray? What is it? Is that hairspray? What, are you making fun of my hair? No, 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 this guy's no. giving me a hard time. 
Where did you get canceled? Okay, this is a can. Oh, oh Seth. Don't screw it up. All right. So, this is it. Is, it is a light bright. One more time because I need this for my Instagram. All right. So, what is this that we're using? This is canned smoke. It's actually a tool that you can buy here at Adorama, I'm guessing. Um, and yeah, it's really super convenient. If I was doing a big project with a lot of smoke, would I use this? Hell no, I would get a smoke machine because this is very impractical for that. But for 12 bucks and to have it as a, something to throw into your kit when, you, when an elf shows up at your studio and you want to make it happen, you're done, right? <laughs> Easy as that. We've got our first thing. I did use a gimmick after I said I wasn't going to, but you know, hey. Uh, yes, that looks like it, although it looks cheaper. Oh, because it doesn't have the skirt. You've got to pay extra for the skirt. That's what I'm using right now. OK, we actually have a skirt, and we're going to go over here with the light after. That's pretty good, right? It's decent? All right, good. Well, let's move on. All right, so another kind of unconventional positioning or whatever for our light is overhead, right? Overhead light is generally not where you want to put the light. Why? Because you're going to get a lot of shadows in the eyes. But if we're creating a bit of a character, that's a little bit more mysterious, right? Maybe hiding the eyes could work for us, right? So why not throw the light up above her? We're gonna use a lantern, which is actually a really good tool for this. This is actually the shot that I plan on doing with this. Um, I wouldn't look right at this, because I want to take the old off. Um, I'm sorry? We're gonna, we're gonna throw the lantern, uh, the actual lantern part on here, which is right there. Um, just goes on there. Yep. Oh, it even has a skirt. So basically what this does, let me switch it back around the other way. By the way, if you guys are into panel frames, uh, this Shamira one is really nice, I must say. I have scrim gyms personally. Um, probably see me use them a lot. But I really like the Shamira system because it goes right into a grip head. If you guys have C-stands, it goes right into the grip head. So actually that's the Adorama one that uses Shamira, right? With a big one. Yeah, very convenient. So there's lots of different types of uh, frame systems. Last Light has a pretty decent one too. It's like more heavy duty. But I really like the Shamira one, so. Uh, the reflector is a piece of cardboard. Uh, yeah, the reflector is a, uh, just a piece of foam board that you can buy at like a, a drugstore. Not a drugstore, but like a drugstore. Well, now that they're gonna have Illegal marijuana, right? There'll be drug stores, right? Will you go and buy the drugs? I guess a pharmacy is technically a drugstore. All right. I love that that's magnetic. Okay, yeah, we're about to fire it up. Okay, this is magnetic. Go on now. <laughs> Who knew? <laughs> Actually, I literally opened this thing up this morning and dropped it right near the stand and it went shook and it stuck on and I was like, hey, that's pretty clever. Yeah. I got to admit, normally, uh, you know, um, I just drop stuff and don't tell anybody, but this was actually really convenient. All right, so your lantern is basically this. This is actually what they call a pancake lantern uh, because it is uh, flat on one side. Uh, a, a traditional lantern is more just like a ball. So what's nice about this a pancake lantern is that you can put it flat up against the ceiling, right? So it's nice if you're going to put it in a hallway or one of those kind of things. Um, even, when, even in the traditional sense where you're putting a tungsten bulb into it. But now with this LED, it's so super flat, you know? Actually, you could probably, I bet you could gaffer tape this. It's not that heavy. Maybe we'll try that. Not right now. Um, so this is a panel lantern. But it's basically a pancake. I don't, I don't know what they call it, but I, know, I get what they call it, but I'm, I'm calling it what I call it. All right, so it has skirts. You can roll the skirts up on various sides, depending on what you want to do. We want to block the light from it in the background, so we're going to leave the skirts down there, and we're going to open the skirt in the front so we can let some light bounce around if we want to add a reflector. Dave already threw sand on it. We could probably maybe raise it a tiny bit more. I don't know. Um, I'll move this out of the way for now. Awesome. We just broke something. Oh, aha! I was looking for this. I gotta take this home. All right, I'm taking it home. I'm gonna put that in my bag. 
All right, guys. That was from Chris Knight. That was from Chris Knight. That's my awesome cup holder. Uh, after the cup holder gate, I guess, incident. Hey, I got a friend. <laughs> All right. See how he just pushed the cup holder in when I stood up? I almost dropped the coffee on the ground. All right. Any questions so far? Have you guys used lanterns before? I feel like a lantern is one of those things that I, that, that I introduce to a lot of people because it's just not the most common thing that you're going to buy. But anybody who does interviews or shoots multiple people, these things are fantastic. The other thing that you can use this for more conventionally is if I was lighting a background, I often will put hang a lantern here. Oop, I also trip. Um, lights the background, hair light. Boom, right? Super convenient. I love lanterns. I dropped the mic except for it's a lavalier. <laughs> now, what's going to happen here before we do anything? Who, ha who here is used lighting at all and can tell me exactly what's going to happen? All of you guys. The light is close. What? what? That's correct. There'll be shadows. Also, as we talked about before, the background being dark, the light is here, forehead, chin, right, body. It's going to be very bright on the top of her head. This is going to be uh, uneven in a sense because it's so close to her, right? It's going to drop that light. The fall off is going to be really, really fast. The closer something is to somebody, the faster the fall off. If I take my softbox and I back it way up, it's going to light your whole face nice and even. It's going to be harder. If I put it really close, all of a sudden one side of the face is dark. That has to do with the inverse square law. So you do a little math, and you know that. So this is close to her. It's going to be shadowy. It's going to be moody. That's what we're going for, right? That's our plan. I guess that would help the face. Yeah, that's exactly perfect. Thanks for coming. Yeah, this, it's, it's really creamy. Yeah. I'm going to say creamy. Line. Good job, Shamira. But I love Shamira, so. Yeah. That soft soap on the sides of that. Yeah. They did a good job with this. So now we've got, <laughs> you did good, kid. Right, we can actually clean it up by throwing a reflector in there. Dave's getting ahead of the game. I don't think I want to clean it up that much, though, but maybe a little bit. Well, that's not too bad. OK, that's not as much as I thought it was going to be. That's pretty good. So right, we've got this. I will eventually get used to this. This is 100% a set demo. <laughs> 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 yeah, so basically, we are uh, we're lighting her here. Now, depending on where she stands in relationship to the lantern, that will change the lighting pattern on her face. So let's experiment. Like I said, we did a little. Let's move around a little bit. Take a step backwards. Right? We don't need to use that yet. <laughs> we just want to see what the light's doing. Move one way or the other, me. There we go. OK, further back, right? See how it changes the shape on her face? Let's look at that compared to the initial. OK. Someday I will learn how to use this. There we go, right? Further back, we got a little bit more light coming across, a little more traditional, a little more kind of hard shaping her face. Hold on, I'm not done, Gary. All right, move forward now to the front of the light, please. Right? Now we definitely need a reflector, but let's just shoot it without it first. Okay, so we're getting a shape on her face, right? Now she's, I don't know what superhero would this be, the hair. She is the hair. <laughs> Right? She's basically super scary, right? But we can add a little bit of fill. No, I got it. If Seth can hold it. <laughs> right? A little bit of fill, not enough. Okay. That's a hair ad. Right. All right. Way too dark, right? So. Either we need to add additional lighting, uh, or you maybe use a silver reflector. Uh, I do have a silver. Or possibly reflect from up here. Right? This could also work. Actually, this would work. Actually, bring your chin up a tiny bit. Bring your chin up, chin up a tiny bit. <coughs> right? We can also do that. Right? Now we have a queen thing, right? A little bit. <laughs> But that's kind of interesting, right? I mean, it kind of is creating shape. We still have the problem that her forehead is going to be hotter than, than her, uh, the rest of her face because of the distance, which you could modulate by moving back and forth. Yes, Gary? You're squirming. Yes. Uh, can I have the, the, the silver reflector, please? Yeah. Um, so are you still going for the dark and moody 
No, I'm going for the clean, sunny, bright look on this one. I haven't quite got there yet, though. Yeah, we're going mysterious. We're going to be all mysterious all the time, because I do clean all the time. Come for another demo, and you'll see it again. Yeah, here we're going for more of a, this is a little bit uh, of an interesting, um, well, it's funny how the other one changed, right? I mean, it was still a little bit kind of dark elf, but it became more colorful and more cheery, even though I started off with the other, because I'm just working with, with what I see. I'm, I'm, right now, I'm testing or playing. This is something that's important, I think, when you're a photographer. Maybe you have a goal when you set out to shoot something, but just kind of see what you get, start playing around. I mean, know what you get so you can repeat it, take notes, you know, make sure you understand what's happening. Don't just get lucky, but you know, see what we get. I mean, let's see. I think silver will probably give us more light. Oh, interesting. Um, maybe go horizontal. This one goes horizontal. Right? So, now we've got the horizontal, right? We got a little bit of a snap with the silver, right? That only costs a few cents more for that to make. Okay? This, this to me, though, is something I could do with just a regular softbox. Like, yeah. So let's have, I think my favorite one so far is in the middle, where you started. Right. So let's start there. Let's go back to that and see what it is again. This is basically, ah. This is this. Why do I like this? Because there's a lot to work with. Yeah. Up. Yeah, let's change the color. Exactly. Thank you. We're going to make it a little more moody with color. Right? This is a dual color light. Right? The more features you use in the light, the more you get paid. So here we go. Clients here, you're like, hey, this can be another color. She's going to be like, oh, start throwing the money down. <laughs> right? Now she's warm. I mean, it's a little jaundice. <laughs> Yeah. We can correct with flash. Yeah, now we can correct it with flash. We have to have a B1 right here. There happens to be a B1 right here. It has a softbox, though, of all the boring <laughs> things in the world. It's like an actual machine gun. It's like, oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this B1 with the softbox here. You know what I'm going to do, though? Because this is character lighting and because I'm in this kind of mood, I'm not just going to put the softbox up and fix it because that would just be, eh. I'm going to go underneath with it. Mm. I know. It's crazy. I'm going, I'm going under. Oh, what app? Oh, this is Focus. Uh, it's Hasselblad's capture software. We're not doing any uh, editing yet. Um, I mean, I, I don't, honestly, I'm not very good at Photoshop. So what I do is I just make fun of people that use Photoshop as a way to feel better about myself. Okay, this is 3B. You're pretty tall, but you're not that tall. All right, so let me come down. Whiplash. You're not that tall. Well, I didn't, I didn't want to like poke you in the face with it. All right, here we go. Or inflate my ego. Well, you're not strangely tall. All right. Uh -oh. So, it is a well-known fact that once you set up the softbox like this, you get paid for using it, whether you use the flash or not. So let's first just use it as a reflector. You're tagging up the bill, right? You're adding how much this costs each time, right? Okay, it's important. That's right, you gotta get paid. I mean, it might be impressive to your friends when you show up with one little camera and take a picture and do a good job. When you show up with a client like that, they're not going to give you five bucks. This is 3B. Sorry about that. We like Channel 3 today. Why not? We're mixing it up. Keeping it fresh. Funky fresh, I like to say. All right, so Dave's going to Oh, should we, should we meter it? Yeah, it so used to using the TTL. I've been spoiled. Not the TTL. Now, typically when you're metering, like you gotta kinda make a choice. Uh, I'm gonna meter at her nose, I think, because I wanna get a kinda even light across her face. People ask me about this all the time, so I ask. So, I mean, your first impulse might be to meter at her chin, because that's like the bottom of the frame. But remember, inverse square. So I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna go around her eye level to her nose and meter up there. Uh, we're 8.5. Or, yeah, 8.05, not 8.5. 
Yeah, that's it. So, uh, oh, hold on. I gotta put the meter back in place. There we go. Uh, five, six and a half. That's decent. It's probably too much, but we'll. Yeah. What's that? Why do you set that up in third stops? So, so you don't have to calculate. Why don't I set it up in third stops so I don't have to calculate? Number one, it's not my meter. Number two, using your brain is how you continue to, to function in life. That's right. That's right. Yeah, and math is part of photography. I just, you know, we do it. Uh oh. Dave's doing something. Oh, yeah, I didn't put that on very tight. <laughs> Yeah. It's my favorite tripod head, but it needs a, quart, a quarter to do it. You got to be rich to use this tripod. <laughs> well, actually, you used to buy your coffee, remember? And then you change. Yes, every time I buy a coffee and it was $1.75, and they raised the price to $2. Now I can't put my tripod head on. <laughs> it's actually true. That's what's funny. Oh, yeah, look at that. All right, so it's a little overexposed. Yeah, they'll drop it. Yep. You didn't use it as a bounce, though. It is now oh. Overpowered. Yeah, we didn't use it as a bounce. I guess we skipped that part. I said it and I didn't do it. Oh, well, you're a liar. It's too late now. Moving on. You know what I want to do? Oh, there we go. <laughs> when you add the light at the bottom, the hair gets out of control. It has to do with static electricity, flash tubes, and uh, the speed of light. Okay, so we've got uh, the two lights going. One's underneath. We're heavily under uh, bottom lighting her. Um, with a kind of a bluish tone, which is kind of interesting, right? Um, it'd be nice if it was more blue, which we could gel it. Well, you we already did, didn't we? Aren't we in tungsten light, white balance? Oh, we're in daylight. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry, I thought we were in tungsten white balance. Let's go to tungsten white balance first. Finish what? There is, there is no finishing for me. I just keep going. Oh, we can just change it there, I guess. This is a digital camera. <laughs> They're all the rage. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. OK, so we did that. That didn't do it for me. I like the other boy better. I think we got to, it, yeah, let's go back, let's go back to, to the flash. Let, let's blew it up. We blew it up. You do have crazy collarbones. Your clavicles are shadowy. It's like Bane voice? Hmm? Is it a Bane voice? I don't know. What's Bane? That's like a comic thing? Uh. Isn't Bane the guy with the, that killed Superman? No. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Sorry. Let me just save this stream for you right now. Oh, he killed Batman. Hold on. <laughs> he didn't kill Batman. He broke his back. Are you guys killing me? Right now? <laughs> All right. Let's see what happens here. I'm not that concerned with Batman. I'm sorry, I know he's very popular. There we go. Now it looks blue. This looks like somebody bought some gels and was like, I'm gonna shoot with gels. <laughs> right? Like this is just not very good, right? <laughs> I mean, no, like this is Yeah, this is like on an Instagram. Yeah, like this okay, so here we are, right? And we're we're messing around and this is just what does this mean, right? What is this? It's nothing, right? Let's make it more interesting though. So take a half a step back. And then maybe like lean forward into the light. That's what I was thinking. That was what you were thinking. You're good like that. Chin down a bit with it. Let's see if we can get a little more even light distribution over her face. So it's more evenly blue. Let's see if we can play around a little bit pose wise. You know, distribution's important. It's the most important part of a film, really. If you don't get a distribution. There we go, right? See the difference? I'm not sure I love her hair being so orange though. So you know what? Let's do this. Let's neutralize by going to tongue. Hold on. Daylight. What, yeah, daylight. On the light. Yep. I can actually do stuff and not just say stuff too. It's amazing. Maybe I'll go extra daylight. It also seems to be brighter when you do that. Interesting. Yeah. Now we're cooling off, right? It's hot here in New York. Ooh, a nice cool picture. Yeah. Oh. Now she's got a bit of an ice princess thing going. Can we make the whole, let's make the whole thing cooler now. So now I'm gonna do some, some uh, post work. Oh, wrong way. I always go the wrong way. I'm gonna, now I'm just I'm eyeballing a white balance that I like, right? She's like that female version of the character that Arnold Schwarzenegger played in the third Batman movie. 
Too crazy. Mr. Freeze. Mr. Freeze, yes, exactly. There we go. She's Mrs. Freeze or Ms. Freeze, depending on if she's married or not. So that's good, but just extend the neck and like, uh, yeah, and up with the eyes a little bit so you're not getting the bags. Well, like Killer Frost? Oh, I, did, I didn't know. There you go. I thought I was creating something new. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> that's cool, but look here with your eyes. Right, which are probably going to go black, which means we might have to add another light or a reflector. But let's see. One step at a time. You also get paid by the number of frames. Oh, no, we don't need it. But I'll use it anyways because you get paid for it. You are totally in the cup. Yeah. <laughs> uh, still in a bit. Actually, I'm going to come up here with it. It's always important to get the reflector in the shot. There we go. Didn't do anything, but I'm going to say it did. <laughs> All right, perfect. It's still missing something, right? She's the ice queen. What's, the, what's like a, a, a dukes? What's the female equivalent of being a duke? Duchess. No, is that right? Yes. Yeah. It doesn't sound right, though. It is. All right, I like that, though. <laughs> All right. Let's get the background, like, something going on back here. Oh, Dave's still shooting something, though. Let me, I'm going to mess around back here. Don't mind me. I'm just over here doing my thing. I think I'm going to blast the background with light. I think I'm just going to give the background a whole heck of a lot of light. What do you think about that? I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to see what happens if we blast the light the background and make it possibly flare back at the camera. We might have enough light to do that. Let's see. This one goes to 11. All right. I'm at 11. Not really. I'll just 10. I didn't even meter it. I'm just doing it. Why? Rebel. Oh, that felt like a lot of light. Yep. Whoa. <laughs> All right. So now we've got this blast of light, which might be too much. It might be too much. Actually, it's not too bad. A smidge. It's not too bad, though. It's, 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 it's a bit overpowering the other lights. Actually, just because, let's turn off all the other lights and see what just that one light's doing. So that's, that's whatever light that is. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kill this. It's going to be dark in here for a second, guys. I just want to see what this one light's doing, because maybe this is doing everything. And, and by the way, even if it's doing everything, even if it's doing everything, you still leave the other one set up, because you get paid for it. All right. So that means it's too bright, obviously, right? Nobody likes that. Maybe you do like that. I don't hate it. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't like the color of it, though. All right. I'm going to use my, is, are you already doing it? Okay, yep. Yeah. Dave's already doing it. Why not just make 10 the brightest instead of 11? Because this one goes to 11. All right. Questions, thoughts, concerns? I know there's concerns, yes. Um, the one shot before you put the background. Before I ruin the background? He just said the one shot before you ruin the background. No, before you put the background. Before I ruin the background. I heard you. Okay. <laughs> Yes. Is that spill from the softbox on the background? I believe so, yes. That, that doesn't show, no, yeah. it's the, the it's, hair light. Oh, it's the hair light bouncing, because like what happened, okay. Frame, but, yeah. anyway. Oh, it was this light. This light. Oh, this light back here fired. Yeah. Can't charge light? for that because it was a mistake. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, I see that. Yeah, I was like, I didn't see it before. I didn't know if it was because the other light heated up. All right, so where are we at? Yep. Here. Let's turn that down a bunch of stops. I'm going to say five stops. Can you just tell this guy that we know it was a Spinal Tap reference? <laughs> we just... Spinal Tap? What's that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, thanks. Holy guacamole. Still a little bit. It's like you used an eraser tool. <laughs> <laughs> this is what it looks like when I try to Photoshop things. <laughs> All right. Actually, I like it. A l let's give it a little bit more light. Because I like it flaring back, just not as much as it was. This is the fine art of... Experimentation. Oh, that's interesting. I don't know what happened there. Would you turn it down? I did. I meant up, but down's fine. I like it, except it needs to be more blue then. All right, let's make it more blue by putting green on it. Nope, that's green. There we got blue. Oh, purple. I love purple. Why am I putting purple? Because I like it. It's not actually going to probably work, but we're going to try it. And the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do something else here. A little quick thing. Oh, you see what I did there? 
I know, I know. Where are you going? I thought maybe I was blocking. Oh, no, no, they, they can see it. <laughs> don't worry about that. This is, this is between us. <laughs> Just me and you. No, so that's got the camera. You know, they got, yeah. Dave's going to make me hold it all day. Now it's purple, right? Not only is it purple, she's got a little hint of color on her there because I wrapped the light around. Not too much, but a little bit. Actually, the purple's not as terrible as I thought it was going to be. Maybe turn it down some? Yeah, it just maybe needs to be turned down to make it more saturated or way up to let it blow out. Let's go up with power. All right, so we're going to bring the power up. So when you're using gels, right? If you overexpose, the gel gets less saturated. If you underexpose, it gets more saturated. So let's overexpose a bit. And when I use the term overexpose, right now we're just eyeballing what we think is important. Now, we're shooting tethered, which is very important, right? If, uh, if you're using the back of your camera, just make sure you really know your system well, because I'm looking at the actual raw file so I can see. Um, sometimes this is tricky to do if you're not. So we're going to turn it up, what, a couple stops? Yeah. Two stops. Let's do it. Three stops. Perfect. All right. So now we've got the purple. We've got white in the center. We've got purple uh, at the edges. We've got purple on her hair, purple on her face. Black light. It looks like a black light, yeah. I kind of wish that it wasn't so dark so much on the background. Dark on the wood? Oh, no, so bright on the background right here. So. We're going to have to feather it, but let's go one stop down. Plus, there's a big wrinkle in the paper right here, which I'm not loving. Yeah, let's do that. I was going to put a net on it, but now we don't, we don't have the, 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 the Matthews Road Rags kit, right? OK. All right, don't worry about it. You don't always have every tool that you want, you know? I was thinking if you put, if everybody here has ever used a net, I'll explain what it is so you can know how much I'm suffering right now not having it. So a net is basically, oh, perfect. Forget it. No. So a net is basically something that you've seen flags, right? You guys know what a flag is. We block light with it. A net is like that, except it looks like a screen door. And when light goes through it, it either changes its uh, hardness, softness, its direction or anything. It just reduces the amount of it. Kind of like an ND if you want to think of it like that. You can put it, we could have put it between the wall and the light and it would have made the wall darker. But anyways, that's actually pretty cool. We're going a slightly different direction because I used purple. I kind of feel like we might want to go back to blue to get back to where we were at. So let's, let's do blue so we can actually have a completed shot. I know it looks good, but Dave's looking at me like, what? Or we just have to go completely purple. But like, what superhero is purple? Actually, isn't the, the, the anti-green lantern people, aren't they purple? No, they're yellow. They're yellow. You almost have it. Does that make sense? <laughs> yellow, though? Shouldn't they be red? There is a purple tomorrow. Grimace is purple. All right, quick survey. <laughs> McDonald's cookies that look like Grimace, right? Right? No, all right. I was having this conversation. People were like, what? You don't remember the McDonald's cookies that look like the characters? You're asking what your white balance is. My white balance, I believe, is, I can tell you what it is, 4,800. So your white balance. Well, I did a custom white balance. Um, it's kind of like a little bit uh, between tungsten and daylights, 4,800. Yeah, let me start again. Hold on. Let me da let's have Dave take a shot first, and then we'll walk through the shot, because now we've got a little crazy. Yeah, we, we were getting a little crazy here. Oh, interesting. OK. That's pretty cool. Right, now she's got a little mermaid. OK, can we get the, oh. Uh-oh. Hold on. The $1,000 fan. <laughs> we're going to do a little hair fly to make it look like she's underwater. Not really, but we're going to try. Oh, no, I'm good at this. <laughs> Don't break my boards, man. <laughs> wow, your hair is very heavy. It's only... I know. I have, that's why I said good luck. Oh, wow. <laughs> she may have the unwavable hair. Hang on. Try, try it now. There we go. Oh. <laughs> Tell me when you're in focus. Yeah, yeah, it's hard. Right, here we go. Ready, Dave. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> Stop. Anytime now. Okay, I am ready. That didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
Yes, that's how you do it. All right, one more time when I don't screw it up. Listen, it's difficult. You should, just bring, you should yeah. start waving from here. Like that works. OK. Don't worry about that, Joe. I know you're very concerned, but it's OK. Yeah, let's clean up the Joe. We don't want you to be concerned. Case is very helpful, which is nice. You just care too much. <laughs> all right, I'll do it. I'm going to do it from up there. It's, you know, you got to have a good. All right, there we go. Ready? Right, ready? Yep. I did nothing. There we go. Oh. No, no, you got to. Here we go. There we go. Build up. Build up is important. That's nice. There we go. She's underwater. <laughs> She's getting a little bit of blur in the hair because the hair is also being lit by the constant light source, right? Is that? We could breathe on the lens. Yeah. Do it. We're going to breathe on the lens. Like, uh, who's that guy that used to breathe on the lens? <laughs> you know the guy. All right. What's that? The lens breather. No, no, no. There's a guy. guy always wore a shirt. You were in the shot. That, that was good, though. But okay. I don't think you need to worry about it. All right, here we go. And the camera didn't go. Okay. There we go. There. Oh, oh that's oh, so nice. Oh, look at this. Oh, whoa. Yeah, it's yeah, focused. Danny with it. Nice. Well, I forget what we did different there. We were supposed to breathe on the lens. Oh, breathe on the lens. We didn't do it, though, because it probably went away before we. So now she's underwater. We got, we got like a mermaid, right? Did we start that way? No. What, what, what were they starting to do? Moody and dark. I, we're just making it happen, right? We're playing around with the subject we have in front of our camera. Right? And we're just trying to make interesting shots utilizing what we have as far as equipment and the, the, the subject. Yes, Gary. I'm kind of curious because, uh, so I guess since you're going towards this direction, um, going back to the exposure, you want to make sure um, certain parts are well exposed. Right. So it, were you aiming to have the side of her face well exposed? Okay, if you were underwater, so he's asking me about the exposure. Imagine somebody is underwater, right? What part should be exposed? The near the top of her, right? Which is right here, right? You answered your own question. Right. That that wasn't underwater. Right, we were experimenting. So in the beginning, we put the light underneath because we were playing around to see like what would happen by messing around with it. Then we found our, th it's, like, it's like jamming, right? Like if you're a jamming, jamming? You know what I'm talking about. Like when I go to like a jazz bar, right? And I'm jamming up there terribly so they kick me off. You know, you're, you're, you're finding that, that tune. Like you know the basics, right? We know our, okay, we're gonna be in three, four, or, you know, five, six or, F8 or whatever, I, mean, I don't know anything about just. So you're basically there, and you're, but then you find what's there, right? You find your rhythm, you start moving in the right direction. That's what we did here. I was like, oh, let's see what happens if we add a blue gel. Oh, you know what, this kind of looks like underwater. Let's do something on the background. Let's, we went from ice, which is what we were doing before, to water, because it felt that way. So okay. that's what you can do, yes? Oh, I just put tape on. oh, tape on the lens. Okay, hold on, do I need to do the water, the thing again? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I like that Seth puts packing tape on my uh, very expensive Hasselblad. <laughs> Your <laughs> that makes it even worse. See, now you get that blur like right that. That's exactly what we want. That's Spend a lot of money on the. That's on, she's on the water now. Yes, she is. Oh, I made it bl grayscale. Oh, black and white water. <laughs> she's in black and white water. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know how I did it. Oh, yeah, good idea. Nope. <laughs> I broke it. I have one minute of glory. All right, let's just do another one because I don't have no idea how I did that. It's probably going to copy to the next. Last. It's good. No, it's not. It won't do it. That's not how it works. Let's do it again. <coughs> okay. All right. So we got the plan here. We got a little tape across the lens. Although I personally would have put tape on the top and the bottom uh, as opposed to the center so that her eyes would be sharp. But, you know, that's me. <laughs> there just needs to be a camera on Seth's face every time I criticize slightly. <laughs> no, I, that's what I would have done, but I think it's good. Or in the, yeah. Here, let me, let me see your razor, please. 
What do you, are you gonna I'm going to cut a slice. And now I'm going to take a razor to the lens after I just complain. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I don't carry a knife after that incident in 1984. Not if those kids with all the flashes. Huh? Okay. That's, probably That's probably too much, yep. but I'm not very good with a knife, which is why I don't carry one. Wrecking my shots. All right, I'm ruining it. Just wrecking my shots. Oh. Okay. This is, this is kind of nice. Here we go. Yep. Nope. Oh. Ooh. Whoa, what happened to that light? What light? It's like overexposed in the back. It may have popped on us. It's in, actually interesting, and it's because of the way that we kind of drew the gel on there in a not proper way. You can notice, and also the wrinkle, you can notice the background actually has a really interesting uh, effect. It is a little bit hot because I think the light was sitting for too long, and now it's like, what? So it blew up. So let's just try it again. Actually, the flash tube might be loose. That happened to my B1X. If your flashes start like firing at full power every once in a while, check your flash tube. But we won't do it in the middle of a live demo. Now I mastered it. There we go. That light's totally gone. <laughs> so I did it. Like yeah. That's all right, though. Look at it. <laughs> I, probably should, I probably should tighten up things right before I do it. Okay, here we go. <laughs> oh, terrible. All right, one more time. Her eyeballs are completely drying out. Yeah. Yeah. This is this is our life, right? So you have to. Sometimes when you're in the middle of a shoot, you have to stop for a second and think, "What? What are we doing here? What the, this is this? I literally I have a piece of cardboard and I'm waving it at a lady. <laughs> right. And that's your life. Your life is a dude waving cardboard at you. There we go. All right. So now she's underwater. She's lit at the top because that's where you'd be lit if you were underwater, right? And uh, yeah, I think that's pretty decent. I'll call that a winner. You'll see that on my Instagram later. All right, next. Let's do one more. I think we have time. Oh, it's 6.08. All right. Should we do something that's dark and moody? All right, let's do one more with this lantern. I really like this lantern. Let's, um. You want to make it like um, street light? Do they have any tobacco or something? Yeah, ooh, yeah. Yeah. Let's do that. Let's take this, I'm gonna put the lantern, I'm gonna, let's, let's put the lantern directly above her. You can, you can look for the jello dip. I will talk and do things at the same time. It's rare, but <laughs> actually, could I ask you to step up for a second? Yeah. I'm gonna go through the center. There we go. All right, so. I am loving this lantern. They're not getting it back. Shamira? Uh, yeah, Seth needs it. It's really nice. I mean, I'm a huge fan of lanterns anyways, and then this is just really convenient. I have the triolet with the, with the lantern, which is really... Um, okay, so let's have you... This thing's crazy smooth. It is. It's, I mean, yeah. Wow. Okay, let's have you step under. Actually, I might have you sit down for this one. Right. Yeah, <laughs> because I'm going to probably have you... We're going to work the... Uh, Get your own stool. Well, she can get her own stool. She's liberated. Uh, chocolate Ritz. Yeah. <laughs> oh, chocolate. I love chocolate. Let's do it. We're going to chocolateize. Chocolate with holes. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Why not? Yeah, uh, yeah we're going to have to lower it. You can come up for a second. Otherwise, it'll be like the cone of silence. Until I leave my stool. Yeah, you can leave it. <laughs> So, <laughs> didn't they remake Maxwell Smart as a movie? Did they have the Cone of Silence? Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Okay, thank you. See, it's a good thing you're here. So, yeah, it's like the Cone of Silence. All right, so we're gonna go dark and moody, and then not, right, we're gonna keep changing it. So we're gonna go from above, we're gonna use our chocolate gel to make it like warm and smushy. Um, I will set this to daylight, which I think we're already at. Okay, that's a magnet. Put it in my refrigerator. So we're going to uh, warm this up in, with the chocolate, which is kind of like a brownish color. So instead of going super orange, it'll go kind of warm in a different way. It's really a nice gel. I like it, although I've never used it on Casey. It does look different on different people, so we'll see. 
Have you ever used chocolate gel on her? Yeah, so let's see what it looks like. I know it does not look that good on me. Oh, there we go. Oh, oh. She's kind of used to this when she goes to the hairdresser and they put the thing over her head to... No? And we used the tin foil. Yeah, you did the cinnafoil thing. That no. got me in trouble. Really? <laughs> so, okay, yeah, I like it. So we're going this, we're going for this like moody, right? You know what would be awesome? Let me have your hat. You're gonna throw it, like I can catch it. All right. You don't have like weird hair things or anything. All right, I'm just, help. you don't have any weird hair things, do you? What? Do you mind wearing Gary's hat? No. I mean, it's Gary's hat though. I mean, but what? I'm gonna have you wear it. Like a baseball cap? Like it's a cap, yeah, you put it on your head. I love the Mets. I don't know what band, what, no, this what isn't. Band? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what band is, New York Mets. <laughs> <laughs> Do they play the rock and roll? <laughs> yeah, so this is a baseball cap. Uh, you wear it when you play baseball, but not usually. You usually wear a helmet. All right, so let's face the camera. All right, so we're going to... So I'm lighting it from above with something that's going to throw extra shadow. Because you want to see how nice it looks. You don't have the skill to put it on without a mirror. I can. Because that is a skill. Yes. And you did it well. I can't do it. I used to wear hats. Not anymore. <laughs> Not my thing. Makes my head too hot. All right, here we go. All right, so let's see. So now we've got, this actually looks decent, so go like this. Yeah. It's kind of pretty, actually, right? Like, here, here's a shot. Should we meter it? You can just use a meter. Yeah, we can probably yeah. meter. We'll start here. This is not dark and moody at all, and I don't care. I did darker moody earlier. Earlier. So with 200 ISO. Uh, let's see. Whoosh. OK, you're going to have to go either. Let's go to 400. And you're probably going to have to go to a 30th. Yeah, four, 400 30th F4. Whoosh, right? Back in my day, we shot Kodachrome 25. Oh, All right. That is kind of yeah. true, You young guys with the 64. <laughs> All right. There we go. What character are we here? Pretty girl. Done. Next. No, okay, so the chocolate gel is actually really nice. Um, it's actually, well, it actually looks nice on your skin. Yeah. This is a good gel for you. So this has an overall, here she is, right? All American, right? Americans like well, baseball or isn't that the thing? People like soccer now. Here she is, right? It's a little bit, it's the end of the day, right? It's like the, her team won or lost, maybe. Let's say her team lost, right? So she's out there, right, in the bleachers or whatever. My boyfriend's a pitcher. Yeah, you know. So she's there, right, waiting for the giant bear that they give you when you go to busy baseball games. So let, let's do that. Let's do like a like kind of a, a, a fresh look. It's actually kind of mostly there, but let's give her some more light because, we, again, you get paid by the number of lights you use. So let's give her, oh, man, this is going to be too challenging to do, like, what if, what if we put red, white, and blue on the background? Oh, jeez. Are we doing it? Do we have, we need three lights. What do you mean you have me? We have two lights. Okay, so let's do this then. Let's do, let's do one red and one blue, and we'll bleed them over and see what happens. I'm going to guess purple. Okay. <laughs> All right, we're gonna light the background in, in, or should we just go blue, like a blue sky? Hmm, so many options here. This actually already looks pretty good, though. Dave wanted to go more gritty, but I think it's pretty. Can I make a decision? Why do we do no. one light in the background like it's a field light in the shot? Because we just did that. No, in the shot. Oh, that's so boring. We do that shit every time. Oh, we can make it look like the field with the lights in the back. Ah, come on. I mean, we do it every time. Fine, we'll put the light in the no, no, shot. No, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Go ahead, make the little You know what though? If we're gonna do that, let's get a Fresnel. We got the Aries, right? Yeah. yeah. Let's do a Fresnel. Okay. Okay, so I'm not gonna use this light in the background because 
We do that every time. But let's use a Fresnel. So a Fresnel light is uh, this guy, Bob Fresnel. He created them in 1942, on this side. And uh, basically, it has a, a lens in the front. The lens has concentric circles. You could probably turn the lights up in here for a second. I'm sure online people are probably like, why is it dark? So the light has concentric circles, so it makes the light a little more even. This is a tungsten light, so we're going to have trouble matching the color, right? Oh, no. I can just switch it here. Oops, the wrong switch. Oh, look at you. Yeah, we'll go right on the stand. We can lose the barn doors, probably. So we're going to Fresnel this guy. So this is going to give us a, a tungsten light source. We're using two constant lights. Why? Because I feel like it. Plus, I just like the way this light feels. There's something about kind of the, uh, the uh, using an actual tungsten light that has a nice kind of uh, quality about it. So, all right, we got this guy. I'm part of the electrical union now, so I can plug it in. OK. We're going to put it in the shot, like it's a field light. We should do a bank of them. All right? Yeah, we're going to blind. You asked for it. That's pretty good. It's a little hot. Are you actually touching on camera now? I am touching the camera now. I decided that I would touch the camera today. Sometimes I do. Um, I can probably see the stand, though. And it's a bit hot. But let's just see. I'm going to take a picture. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. It's way overexposed. Uh, OK, we got a, we got ND, oh, we got um, blah, 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 doobies. Na, uh, scrims, yep, thank you. All right, if we don't have scrims, then we're what they call SOL. But we have them. So scrims are things, yes, Gary, scrims are things that you put in front of lights, which lowers the amount of output without changing the actual quality of light. Yes. Would, would change in the camera help? No, because it would also change this light. No, no, I meant a dimmer on the um, Fresnel. A camera on the Fresnel? No, no, no. A dimmer. A dimmer. A dimmer. A dimmer. Oh. We, have we don't have dimmers. What do we fancy? Okay, right, so yes. Um, you could put a dimmer on the Fresnel. However, it does change the color temperature, so if you care about that kind of stuff, then um, it will be a problem. Uh, I don't really care about it in this case, but we don't have a dimmer, so we can't do it. But that's not a bad idea for some things. I love the lens flare. I like what we're getting. Okay, so if we can't, if we don't have that. I can do 150. It's a, let's switch to a 150, yeah. But it doesn't look like it's going to be much. Why don't we do this? I don't mind, actually, that it's so overexposed, but it's just too much. Can we, hold on a second. We can't block any of it because the light's in the shot. Yeah. What about putting, we, I see we have a gel frame. Why don't we, uh, what if we gel it up with the blue? That'll, that'll drop the amount of power that I can switch back to blue here. Oh, okay. The gels are with the thing that's missing. Okay. We're not going to do it this way. Let's do this instead. Let's just not have the light in the shot. I like the feel of this, though. Let's just flare and stuff. But Yeah, so we can, we can turn it down, right? All right, we're going to have to use the flash. It's sad. If we had a lantern for the flash, that'd be better. All right, we're going to use the flash. I know you guys are sad. You want to use the. All right. All right, we're going to go back to using the flash. I have A1. An A1. I have A1 they, yeah. have they do. Uh, we could use an A1. Are they charged and everything? Yeah. All right. We're going to use the A1, which is. You know, I used to put it on my steak, but now I just like steaks plain. I don't put anything on steak anymore. Oh, the Profoto A1. Yeah. Oh, yes. So Profoto A1 is the, is the like a small on-camera <laughs> flash. What do they call it? The smallest studio light in the world. What channel are you on? Three. Oh, that's cool. Let's actually use the small flex pan. Yes. All right, so we're going to, okay, so we got a couple of, oh, do we have a doobie doobie? Yeah. Um, 
we got a couple of things going on here. Number one, we can see the stand in the shot. Number two, I want a Fresnel lens if we can pull it off. And number three, the more gear you use, the more you get paid. And once you set something up, you're getting paid for it. So even though we're not going to use this anymore, Dave, uh, Dave's setting that up. Seth's going to get me a, uh, an umbrella adapter, as they call it. This is a, oh, no, he's got, oh, nice. A Justin clamp. Seth does not mess around. We're going to throw a Justin clamp on there, named after Justin Timberlake. <laughs> He used these clamps in his 1993, would he be around there back then? 1993 tour? By that, back then he was probably with the Backstreet Boys. No, in sync. We're using the small black C stand. Okay, cool. Has nothing to do with Justin Timberlake. I just made that up. Yeah, all right, cool. So the A1, as you guys probably know, oh, actually, oh, it's off now, right? What? Seth just used them for a live stream. It was pretty cool with uh, Casey McSherry. It will be on Facebook. So check that out. Uh, you'll see how to use it properly, but we're going to use it improperly because that's what I do. <laughs> so we, we're going to make a small hot source in the back. It is a flash, which means that we can control the amount of power, which is really useful for us because we need to balance. If you have a bunch of lights to balance, and you don't have any means to control them, it becomes a little bit more uh, complicated. This is going to give us a little, it's going to be a little easier for us. We like when things are easy. You know, let's just face it. Okay, well, it's going to, yeah, that's either going to look awesome or there's like a ghost back there. Well, I'll just black it out. I mean, yeah, yeah, no, I like it. <laughs> little arms on him. Listen, if I could see the stand in the picture, that's why they made Photoshop. I don't know how to use it. One of you guys will have to do it for me. There we go. <laughs> hey guys, thanks for coming. That was really good. There's a lot of reflection coming back. Yeah. Uh, what is? Hold on. Did the other one go off as well? Yeah, yeah. I made sure it's off. Okay, I like it. I like the other one. I say we just kill the one that's in the shot and just basically do that with the yeah. second one. Yeah. Let's just do that on both sides. Yeah. Okay. All right, cool. All right, so again, modifying our idea as we go based on what we have. If you come to the event that I do once in a while, it's about shooting to a layout for advertising. I plan that all ahead and I have all the tools and you never see me do this. When I do these demos, I, I purposely go with the flow to show you what it's like to actually be on an actual shoot. So yeah, we, don't, we couldn't possibly make this stuff up. <laughs> Seth busting his jacket out is like, or is that my jacket? That's, that's broken you. doof. Oh, it's broken doof. Yeah. <laughs> Hold on, so should we, should we use this one as well? Or is it, this doesn't do anything, right? Yeah, so we put this one there and put that one there. All right, let's swap them out. All right, I'm going to put this back. All right, cool. So here's what we're going to do, just because I'm sure that it got very confusing all of a sudden. We had this idea, right? Casey sat down. I wanted to give Gary a hard time. I took his hat. Now... I've got to do a shot with it, right? Because once you take somebody's hat, you can't just not use it, right? That would just be so jerky. It's something I might do, but not today. So here we are. Now I got to do a baseball shot. She puts the hat on. I get an idea. I'm like, oh, she kind of looks like the end of the day, blah, blah, blah. We know we're in a studio. We have a dark background, so we can't make it the sky outside. Um, so what are our options? Hey, let's make it look like lights are out. It's dark out now. It's the stadium. The lights are up, right? So we're going to put some lights in the shot to give that effect. Mm, didn't work, right? So we can get there, right? We don't have to have them in the shot. If they're in a little bit, we can hint at it and still create that vibe, right? Because that's all we're going for is a feeling. This is not a real thing, right? It's the idea. We're, we're, we're selling an idea here with the character shot. We're not necessarily selling the actual uh, concept. Thank you, Seth, though. No. That was, yes. No, I don't think we need that. Fine. It's awesome. I mean, I love the, the A1s. They're really good. Yeah. Uh, we shot with the... <laughs> <laughs> the prototype on a building in Brooklyn, uh, uh, yeah, that was and that was nuts, but it was actually, awesome. The one, the one on your channel is a good video. Yeah. yeah, you can see it on my channel, actually. Uh, Seth is there. I don't know if you're actually in the video. I think you're just helping me. No, I'm in the video. Yeah, he's in the video helping out. Um, we shot uh, on, on a roof in Brooklyn, and it's pretty cool with the A1 when it first came out. It's basically Profoto's uh, answer to a really small portable flash for like 
you know, if you're doing weddings or that kind of thing. Uh, probably, though, I could see people using them as their main lights if they did a lot of location portraiture. They're great. Yeah, um, I, I'm, I lean towards the B2 personally, but I think for, for some people, they'd be really good. All right, so, okay. Maybe just get less of it on her face and more flair. <laughs> maybe just actually do it. Oh, yeah, sorry. Let's just, Here. let's turn the modeling lights on maybe so, so that people can see. This is part of the problem. Yeah. Yeah, we've got to flip the head the other way. Thank you, Dave. I'll do this one. Uh, well, that one's good. Well, it does no flare, though. Well, I want to push it a little closer. Yeah, okay. It, 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 okay. <sighs> All kinds of stuff is going on around you. All right, so questions about this mess that is now the, the on set. Actually, it's kind of getting a nice vibe. I like that hat. You may not get it back. I mean, not that I'm going to wear it. Yeah, they, Gary wore a hat. Guys, I had a thing <laughs> planned for you. Gary ruined it. Just going to throw that out there. Gary wore a hat. Yeah. That's what happened. <laughs> Gary wore a hat you sounds like to, a children's book. Try to do a nice demo. <laughs> this guy comes here wearing a hat. <laughs> All right, what's up? OK. All right, up, I guess. How's that? Okay, how's that? Whenever you're adjusting lights like this, do it from the camera position. You'll save yourself a lot of frustration. If you're by yourself and you want to, uh, you know, you know, you're by, obviously you don't know, everybody doesn't have a Dave. You can, if you have a screen a camera that has a screen that flips up, or maybe your camera has an app so you can look at it on your phone, you can actually be looking through your camera while you're adjusting things. That's pretty good, but I'd like to have more flair. And what's that blue in the corner? You gotta get it in, in closer in the shot. Is that the interior of the? Okay. 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 Try that. Remember, I'm turning the modeling lights off because that one too. I'm turning them off before I shoot because remember they'll affect the exposure um, and be extra hot. Okay, here we go. Okay. All right, let's give that a shot. Let me turn the model light off. I've already just said that. Dude. Cool. All right, cool, guys. So, we're, again, we have a couple of different things going on. We can shoot. Um, we've got constant light source. This is an LED above her head, giving her this kind of, oh, there you go. Yeah. So it's giving her that kind of uh, overall warmth to her, right? Um, kind of that in the, in the dark kind of warm crunchiness. I love chocolate gels. Uh, they, they don't look good on everybody's skin, but on most people, it's good, yeah. You, you kind of, when you first start doing gels, Everybody's like, oh, I want to warm somebody up. So they throw a CTO on there, which is like the simplest thing. Everybody has them. When you start getting into more cosmetic type gels, you'll find that they can be really interesting. You know, your, your ambers and your chocolates and those kind of stuff. It's definitely worth experimenting with your peaches. So um, nice. OK, so all right, let's do the moody looking off end of the day uh, shot that we need to do for this so we can have our shot finished image. All right, guys, so we have that overhead. Warm, right? Coming from overhead, but it's soft and nice. So our subject is still being lit with really nice soft light, right? Is that guy a small head? Yeah. Yeah, there you go. All right, so in the back, we, for just to give ourselves a little bit more uh, dimension, a little bit more space, a little bit more kind of story, if you will, we've got these two lights now being our kind of like field lights, giving her some, some exposure, a little lens flare, a little play back there. They said it looks like a Goosebumps cover. Goosebumps, which is a kids', kids horror, horror stories, yeah. It does kind of look like a Goosebumps cover. You could be a kid's bad guy. Yeah, kid's bad guy. You know, like a bad guy in a kid's story, like the, like a... Like a supervillain, yeah. Like the woman who had all the Dalmatians. All right. Cruella de Vil? Cruella de Vil, exactly. Oh, boy. There you go. <laughs> what? 
I'm saying she was kind of a badass, no? Oh, really? Oh, there you go. There we go. <laughs> I'm all about that. All right, so we got it. Let's try to get a little bit more of a, a softer mood and turn a little bit away from the hot, the lights in the back because we're a bit overexposed back there, which I don't really want. See, exposed. Yep. All right. All right, we're going to, uh, any questions before we wrap? No. Where you're so lost or you got it. Either way, I'm fine. <laughs> um, the concept here, all right. Okay, that's fine. She's like, oh, me? All right, so let's just go through these really quickly. If I can remember how to do it. I'm just going to pick at random. Let me just pick at random. I still kind of like the overexposed background shot. I may come back to that someday. So we kind of played around with a lot of different ideas here, right? How come I can't select? Though? Apparently, I have no idea how to use this software. It would be useful if I could learn how to use it. So we've got that last shot. We've got our. Actually, I'm going to do it this Mark way. Mark Wallace says, looks good, Daniel. Mark Wallace. Oh, by the way, Mark's going to be in town. When is that? Next Two, two weeks from now, Fernando? End of June. End of June. We're doing a thing called uh, inspire. inspire here at Adorama, I guess, to inspire people. And uh, Mark Wallace, who is the, uh, the world traveler of the Adorama uh, hosts, I would like to be Mark Wallace when I grow up, um, he is going to be in town, right? He's going to do some stuff. I don't know exactly what he's doing. Some Mark Wallace stuff. But uh, he'll be kicking some butt. Uh, Mark is like the original. He's like OG. The original Daniel? I think, no, he's the, he's the original Adorama host, right? I think he's the first one. Uh, maybe the first. Uh... Anyways, Mark's awesome. If you guys haven't checked out his stuff, um, I always refer you guys back to the, especially the Exposure Triangle videos. I love those. Um, but Mark's pretty awesome, and he'll be in town. Maybe he'll have his motorcycle and he'll give me a ride on the back. No? Okay. Oh, Seth. Seth's pointing at something. Yes, you can turn the lights on. Okay. We got the lights on. I'm trying to show the pictures. Okay, so here we go. Finish shots. Boom. So we got here. Let me just look at green. Do you ever do lantern payback? Do I ever do what? Gary's going to get us half back. Did Gary just come? Okay, well, I can't. Uh... Okay, so I'm looking for the image. There we go. Green. Sorry, somebody's asking me a question, guys. Mark is, actually, Mark is saying, yes, that is going to happen. <laughs> yes, thanks, Mark. Yeah, I, if he had a sidecar, I feel like I'd be cooler in a sidecar, but I'll ride on the back. All right, so, anyway, sorry, guys. Someday I will learn how to use a computer, but not yet. Um, okay, so here's what we got, right? We came into this. We're like, let's do something moody, which we didn't do. Um, we wanted to play around a little bit. We decided we were going to play with color, right? We had a new light. We were messing around. We created this kind of more... Uh, elf feel, right? We started to go in that direction with the colors. We added a little bit of snap from the back, which felt like the moon. Seth was like, hey, Gavin Hoa gives me shit. So he basically gave oh. me the, he was, he was showing off. <laughs> Whoa. I'm going live tomorrow. <laughs> so he, we, we stole his uh, smoke, and it was clear that I didn't know how to use it, so he came out and made it happen. Uh, then we went for something that had a little bit more of a funkier flair. We were starting with a dark and moody shot, which we didn't do, right? And we started to feel like this felt like it might be underwater, right? Once we got on that tip, though, we went in that direction. It wasn't like all of a sudden we were like, oh, yeah, it looks like underwater. I'm sitting by my computer two days later, right? You saw it evolve. We were like, let's add balloons, see what it looks like. Oh, kind of like ice. Oh, no, it kind of looks like water. And then we kind of made that happen. Seth did this cool uh, tape technique. I was amazing with the wind. <laughs> Casey, you know, was, was, she was all right. Um, <laughs> then now we've got our in the bleachers, you know, just uh, finished playing baseball pitcher, maybe? I think you'd be a pitcher. She's a pitcher, right? She's, she, the, she, you know, no, there'll be no celebrating in Mudville today. Um, you know, we threw some lights in the back. We tried to add some dimensions and space. And yeah, so we got some three, sh three shots here that have some different mood and stuff. It's not just the classic pretty picture, which I think is kind of what we're going for when we create these character portraits. They're not. When will Mark Walsh be on set? Oh my God, I would love to have Mark. If we can get a commitment, Mark will be here. Actually, is he, if he, well, we don't know what he's doing. Is there like a list of stuff that Mark's doing? Fernando? Is there a list of things? Uh, All right, so he's going to look. OK, good. We're getting some events up here because we should. Last time he was here, he did a lecture in the store, which was pretty awesome. Uh, hopefully, he'll do that again. 
um, or some other cool things. I think we're doing a panel together. Oh, cool. Yeah, so that'll be really fun. Uh, it is sometime in June. The last week of June. Three days before, my phone beeps and says, Daniel, go to Adorama. And that's kind of how I end up here. <laughs> Anybody who's been around should know that I have no idea. Fernando's waving his hand. Uh, June 27th, 4 p.m. at the uh, Union Square Ballroom. June 27th, 4 p.m. That's Mark? Yes. Uh, Union Square Ballroom. Mark Wallace's favorite lighting setups. Oh, Mark Wallace's favorite lighting setups. Ooh, is that going to stream? I may attend uh, so that I can steal them. OK, so. That's what I do. You like to take a lot of <laughs> that's, listen, I watch people. I learn just like you guys should do as well. This is kind of what we're all about here. Learn. When I was uh, starting out, I worked for a lot of photographers. That's how I learned my craft. This is great for you guys. I think you can come and do this um, and see great people like Mark Walls. I think a bunch of people are coming in. Like Gavin's going to be here too, right? And also Vanessa Joy will be here. Uh, uh, b -b 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 David Bergman, Emily Soto. So there'll be a lot of cool people. So make sure you guys check that out. It's going to be really fun. Um, Rick Salmon, who's pretty awesome. Um, if you don't already, follow me on YouTube or Facebook, Daniel Rent Photographer. Do a lot of stuff with Seth on my channel. It's under 1,200 sessions. Casey is Casey McSherry. Adorama is Adorama. Next week, I'm doing something. Whatever that says right there. Crap. <laughs> well, left corner. What am I doing next week? Something with pictures of Erica. Intro to flash photography. Oh, intro to flash photography. Oh, so nice. if you're sitting here, you're probably, and we're like, what the hell is he doing? Come next week. Actually, probably that's everybody. <laughs> no, we're going to do intro to flash photography next week. We're going to get into the more of the, the uh, nuts and bolts of it. This was one where I really wanted to play around and experiment, so I didn't get that technical as far as describing. Next week, we're going to get all about that. To bring your notebook. Actually, don't, because I don't want to be coming to me later and be like, you said, and I'm be like, oh, I didn't say that. Um, it's only recorded on YouTube. Yes. You know, it's only <laughs> but we're going to talk all about flash. I'm going to go all the way from like a speed light to like some, some more fancy stuff, other things you can do with it without getting too complicated. And I think the week after that is advanced flash, um, which probably isn't up yet. I'm not sure. Uh, and then that's good. Thanks, guys. And come again. <laughs>